living as children of the light. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 32. With the Lord's authority I say this, Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasures and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus, you have learned the truth that comes from Him. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work. And then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, He has identified you as His own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. The natural tendency of human beings is to think their way away from God leaving them hopelessly confused. Intellectual pride, rationalizations, and excuses all keep people from God. Don't be surprised if people can't grasp the good news. The good news will seem foolish to those who forsake faith and rely on their own understanding. People should be able to see a difference between Christians and non-Christians because of the way Christians live. We are to live full of light. Paul told the Ephesians to leave behind the old life of sin, since they were followers of Christ. Living the Christian life is a process. Although we have a new nature, we don't automatically think all good thoughts and express all right attitudes when we become new people in Christ. But if we keep listening to God, we will be changing all the time. As you look back over the last year, do you see a progress of change for the better in your thoughts, attitudes, and actions? Although change may be slow, it comes as you trust God to change you. For more about our new nature as believers, see Romans chapter 6, verse 6, chapter 8, verse 9, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 26, and Colossians chapter 3, verse 3 through 8. Our old way of life, before we believed in Christ, is completely in the past. We should put it behind us, like old clothes to be thrown away. When we decide to accept Christ's gift of salvation, it is both a one-time decision as well as a daily conscious commitment. We are not to be driven by desire and impulse. We must put on the new nature, head in the new direction, 
and have the new way of thinking that the Holy Spirit gives. Lying to each other disrupts unity by creating conflicts and destroying trust. It tears down relationships and leads to open warfare in a church. The Bible doesn't tell us that we shouldn't feel angry, but it points out that it is important to handle our anger properly. If vented thoughtlessly, anger can hurt others and destroy relationships. If bottled up inside, it can cause us to become bitter and destroy us from within. Paul tells us to deal with our anger immediately in a way that builds relationships rather than destroys them. If we nurse our anger, we will give the devil an opportunity to divide us. Are you angry with someone right now? What can you do to resolve your differences? Don't let the day end before you begin to work on mending your relationship. We can bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit by the way we live. Paul warns us against unwholesome language, bitterness, improper use of anger, harsh words, slander, and bad attitudes toward others. Instead of acting that way, we should be forgiving, just as God has forgiven us. Are you bringing sorrow or pleasing God with your attitudes and actions? Act in love toward your brothers and sisters in Christ, just as God acted in love by sending His Son to die for your sins. The Holy Spirit within us is a guarantee that we belong to God. This is Christ's law of forgiveness as taught in the Gospels, Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15, and chapter 18, verse 35, Mark chapter 11, verse 25. We also see it in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Luke chapter 11, verse 4. God forgives us, not because we forgive others, but solely because of His great mercy. As we come to understand His mercy, however, we will want to be like Him. Having received forgiveness, we will pass it on to others. Those who are unwilling to forgive have not become one with Christ. Who was willing to forgive, even those who crucified Him? Luke chapter 23 Verse 34 We sometimes think that the Christian life is just a bunch of negatives. Here Paul wrote, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But Paul also gave the positive. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers? God wants us to build each other up and be full of grace. The negative is only mentioned because of how it can overpower the positive. God wants to bring positive changes into our lives.